Hello and or welcome back. Uh, it's been a crazy couple weeks over here and I apologize for missing last Monday. Uh, since I talked about separating my storage and compute concerns a couple weeks ago, I kind of inceptioned myself and jumped right into doing that. Since then, I've migrated my containers running in Unraid onto their own Docker host, and I've taken down my Unraid uh, storage servers and converted those to TrueNAS. It's still a bit chaotic over here. Uh, the backup server needs to be rebuilt, and I'm down to only one copy of all the data I hold dear, and that's a fairly uncomfortable place to be. So while I promise I will get to all the fun stuff I did on Proxmox and Docker, today I have to tackle getting backups back up and running. I've got TrueNAS freshly installed on the same hardware that we built in the first video. We'll go through setting up storage and then configuring backups using rsync tasks. Anyway, if I did my job right, the B-roll TrueNAS install should be wrapping up and we can get to all the fun stuff. So let's log in with the admin credentials we created during our install. And here we are. First run, so there's not much to see. Uh, our CPU is not doing anything, we've got nothing sitting in memory, there's nothing going over the network. Truth be told, the memory probably needs an upgrade. TrueNAS makes much better use of this than Unraid ever did, and luckily I left one DIM free when I built this thing, so it's pretty easy to upgrade to 32 gigs. Anywho, to get started we have to tell TrueNAS how we want to use our disks. So we'll jump over here to storage, and we'll click create pool. Now, because I'm nothing if not predictable, we're going to stick with the name Expanse for this. Uh, I'm not going to click encryption in my case. Like before, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Now, I have this warning saying that the disks in this, in this machine have already been used for pools in the past. I set up a, an interim TrueNAS server on here while I was copying stuff off the main server. We're basically doing a fresh start today because I want a clean slate for this as a dedicated backup machine. So in my case, I'm going to say yes, reuse those disks, and I know that means I can't re-import the pool that's on them later. We'll click next. For the data layout, uh, we have a ton of options. We can do stripes, mirrors, and various flavors of RAID. Because I only have the five disks in this thing, I'm going to stick to RAID Z1. That gives us four disks for data and one for parity, so I can lose one disk before I lose any data. Uh, these are all pretty new, and they're already getting pretty full, so they'll be replaced soonish anyway. I'm not worried about them dying en masse before that happens. Uh, so one parity drive is plenty for me. Now, because my layout is super simple, I could just you know, pick my disk size, and pick the width, and the number of VDEVs, and call it good. But let's go through the manual disk selection in hopes that that'll help somebody. First, you'll see all your disks on the left. Uh, TrueNAS is nice and lets you sort and filter by various parameters, uh, size, disk type, that kind of thing. Again, in my case, it's super straightforward and there's not much to do. So the first thing we need to do is create a VDEV. And this, to me, is where the UI kind of sucked. Like, it took me forever. There's this Add button up here that we have to click. It took me forever to find that. And I actually didn't see the message very clearly stating click the add button until I was preparing for this video. So maybe that's on me. Anyway, let's click add and get going. Uh, this will create a RAID Z1, which we picked on the previous screen. And then it's just a matter of dropping all of our drives in here. One at a time. Done. Hit save and we're golden. From here, we'll click next. Now again, because I'm limited by the hardware, uh, I'm not going to be creating a log pool, not going to be creating a spare pool, cache, metadata, dedupe. If you have drives for those um, and your use case requires them, by all means, they're just not an option or a necessity in my case. Lastly, we get a chance to review our choices. Uh, with RAID Z1, it looks like we're going to get just under 22 terabytes of usable space, so that's really cool. And then it's warning me one more time that if I move ahead, I'll lose the ability to re-import the existing pool on these disks, and that's fine. Let's create this pool. And there we are, all set. All right, now that we have our storage all set up, let's get to setting up rsync. Uh, as luck would have it, this is the first version of TrueNAS scale that doesn't have the rsync daemon. That started with 2310. Um, 
That means most of the tutorials I've found on how to set up rsync don't apply anymore because the module option is gone, and I really want to do this without external apps. When setting up rsync, there are two ways to set it up. I can have the backup server pull data from actual data server, or I can have the data server push data to the backup. Uh, I'm going to go for the latter just because I want the data server to be in charge of what gets backed up. That means the bulk of this configuration is going to happen over on the data server. But here we do need to set up SSH first. So we'll go into system settings, services. We want to make sure that SSH is currently on and we want to make sure it starts by default. Now from here we need to go to the data server. You'll see right now we're at 1068.2.2, that's the backup. We'll switch over here to 1068.2.1, that's my main data server. We'll log in. Once we're here, we need to set up uh, credentials for rsync to actually be able to talk to the backup server. So we'll go to credentials, backup credentials, and we'll create a new SSH connection. We'll create that with SSH keys, and it'll generate those for us. So we'll click add. We'll give it a name. We'll continue my trend for unbridled originality and call it expanse because we're connecting to that. We'll leave this as semi-automatic so that it'll do all the configuration for us. Uh, for the URL, we'll punch in the URL or the IP address of the server. The admin username we're going to use is actually going to be admin because that's the one that's set up. Punch in our password. Oh, if I can type. There's no one-time password. We're going to use root for a connection as the username. And then for private key, we'll click generate. And I'm not changing the timeout, at least not now. This might need to be changed later, but 10 seconds seems fine. We'll click save. And done. That set up our SSH connection, and it created an SSH key pair. You can verify this work by going back to the backup server and going into credentials, users, and looking at your root. Click edit, and you should see that it now has an SSH RSA key. Uh, this is the public key portion of the private key we just generated on the server, or on the data server. Uh, anywho, we're all good here. Back to the data server. All that's left on the data server is actually scheduling rsync tasks now. So we'll go to data protection, rsync tasks, we'll add one. We'll pick dissident proxmox. This is just my share for proxmox ISOs, um, VM backups, that kind of thing. It's a fairly small data set, so it's kind of ideal for this test. Click on proxmox. Uh, we'll change on the remote side. We'll change the module to SSH. We'll change the connect using option to our keychain, and that'll give us access down here to the connection we just created. Click on expanse. We need to give this a remote path, which, if you remember, our remote path over here is expanse, backup, and then we'll create subfolders under that. Over here, our folder will be expanse, slash backup. We'll make a folder for the data set we're backing up, so dissident, and then a folder for the actual data we're backing up, so proxmox. Then we need to configure the user we're going to use for this. We'll do this as root, just so all the permissions aren't an issue. Uh, the direction from the data server will be push. And we'll give it a description that just says proxmox backup. Last thing we need to do is set a schedule. I'm going to set, for this one, I'll go weekly. There are others I'll do more frequently. But, uh, for this, every Sunday at midnight is just fine. That's it. We want it to be recursive. We do want it to be enabled. Done save and we are good to go at this point we can run this right now hit continue and it failed immediately let's go see what happened okay it's complaining that the directories i'm trying to write to don't exist so let's go make those real quick go back to our backup server jump into the shell go back and let's try this again Hit it. And there we go. Now it's running. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to configure this for the rest of these. And then I will finally have backups again. Uh, next week, I think we'll do a deeper dive into what I did with Docker and how I set up my Docker Compose. 
um, and how I'm doing the networking for that because there was there was some weirdness there. Um, unless I decide to take another random journey into something else. Uh, join me next week to find out. Thanks very much. Have a good one.